Now to Las Vegas, where the Consumer Electronics Show is taking place. The CES is where tech companies, large and small, showcase their newest products. A surprise entry this year is Lego. The Danish toy maker unveiled an interactive building brick, describing it as one of the most important developments in the Lego system for decades. The so-called smart brick is equipped with a speaker, LED lights and a tiny chip that allows it to detect and interact with other smart bricks. And US tech giant NVIDIA, the world's highest valued company, uh, used the trade show to announce an artificial intelligence model that will power self-driving cars. And we've been working on it for this the pledge from NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang is to bring the first thinking and reasoning AI vehicles to the road in 2026. Mercedes uh, agreed to partner with us five years ago to go make all of this possible. We imagine that someday, a billion cars on the road will all be autonomous. German automaker Mercedes-Benz will produce the first cars equipped with NVIDIA's new AI platform called Alpameo. They are scheduled to be available in the United States in the coming months and Europe and Asia later in the year. It's part of the company's push to so-called physical AI building its own products rather than just providing the infrastructure for its competitors. These two robots showcased at the event are powered by NVIDIA chips and software, demonstrating its push for market dominance. Analysts say this robust competition could speed up the implementation of AI in real-world settings. This is showing robotics is coming a lot quicker than investors or even people in the industry are thinking. Robotics, in my opinion, will be in houses around the world. In the U.S., from a humanoid robotics perspective, over the next 12 to 18 months. NVIDIA will be hoping that Huang's presentation at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas will add to its record-breaking run as a stock market's highest ever valued company. Well, uh, Stephen Beersley from DW Business is here to unpack all that for us. So, welcome, hey, Phil. Stephen. Um, how is this latest announcement then likely to impact the market position of this already massive company? Yeah, when we look at NVIDIA, they made $500 million in the fourth quarter of last year from automotive alone. That sounds like a lot. That's compared to $35 billion, I should say, $35 billion in revenues in the same quarter in its uh, bread and butter sort of uh, sector here, which is data sets, which is chips, that kind of stuff. So automotive isn't such a big part of NVIDIA when we think of it. And yet, as that report just said, it's a major upside for this company. Right now, Autonomous is taking off in a way that it hasn't in a long, long time. You've been hearing the hype for as long as I have, right? Over the past decade, everyone talking about Autonomous is around the corner, Autonomous is around the corner. We're seeing more evidence that progress is being made in ways than it hasn't been. And for NVIDIA right now to come out and then show that it's actually, it actually has this hand that we didn't really know that it had or suspected that it had is actually quite something in this sector. It had been working with companies like Foxconn. Uh, now it's working with Mercedes, with Hyundai, with Toyota. So it has, has all these partnerships and it could become a major player in yet another sector where autonomy is really uh, key. And so tell us about then, who are the other major players in the uh, autonomous vehicle industry? So you could almost think of it in, in two different sectors, right? You have one that is robo-taxis. And you've been hearing a lot about this in the US, for example, in China, where in a lot of cities they have robo-taxis going around certain areas that you can hire and you can take to certain places, right? So it's within a, a kind of confined area and there's no human intervention there. That's considered level four autonomous driving. That's about as high as we've gotten right now. So there's the robo-taxis. And then we have something like what Mercedes has in its top tier cars right now, which is this kind of software for private consumers, right? And that is, it's a level three, it's one below. You have to sit there. Obviously, you're already sitting in your car, you turn it on. And under certain framework conditions, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to be ready necessarily to grab the wheel at every moment, mm -hmm. but it's in certain conditions that it will come and alert you that you need to. So you still have to be there, but it's different than what we've seen so far, at least in the past like five years or so. And this is continuing to develop. So in those two areas, you have players like Waymo, which is Google, you have Uber, you have Tesla in the robo taxi area. And then in this kind of area right here, we've seen a lot of ambitions from, of course, Tesla is one that you think of as well. And then Mercedes really leading the pack with that kind of level three 
uh, uh, autonomous nature, which, which something we just hadn't really seen until recent years. Okay, so we, we've we've seen some of this technology on the streets of places like San Francisco and in various uh, Chinese cities. How long before it's everywhere? How long before it's got common sight? I don't know. I mean, some analysts are saying 2035 to 2040. That's what we. That's what we're. That's sort of the kind of most optimistic, most hyped scenario, right? But we know that with self-driving cars, the hype has been there for a long time, and there are still setbacks that we have to consider. We're seeing this all the time with companies, and we've seen it in the past. It does seem to have come beyond a certain threshold that, that it was struggling to get past for a while. And now it seems like we are making progress with robo taxis, with this kind of level three autonomy. When are you gonna be able to push your kids into a car and take them to, or have them taken to soccer practice and not have to worry about it, not have to worry about a driver there? I don't know, but okay. it's coming is what the experts say, the people who watch this very closely. There's always an upside. Thank you for that, Stephen Beardsley <laughs> from DW Business. Let's take a look at this with Igor Bonifacic, who is a senior AI reporter with the tech website End Gadgets. He joins us from Toronto, Canada. Uh, welcome, Igor. Um, NVIDIA's new AI chips, which they're using for these self-driving cars, five times the capacity of existing uh, technology. Talk us through the significance of how will it affect our daily lives? Um, well, it won't affect your daily lives right away because... Um we should uh, caveat it by that it's a level two um, autonomous car, which is similar to what you have with Tesla FSD. So it can't drive itself by itself immediately, right? Um, this might take a few years before it gets to level four, uh, which is what the kind of golden grail of um, uh, autonomous driving where the car can drive it completely by itself. So it's still a work in progress like it's been for almost a decade plus now. Okay, so it's still a work in progress. So uh, why is the, the why the market so hyped up about it? Uh, because I mean, it's Nvidia, right? It's you know the most valuable company in the world, and um, it's working with obviously an established automaker and one that's kind of lost, I think, a lot of ground to Tesla over the uh, years. Um, so I think it's really just that. Jensen kind of shine to it where this is the most powerful, one of the most powerful companies in the world. And it really has in the, over the last few years kind of changed reality to fit its vision of reality. This, this technology, this self-driving uh, technology, the company's pushing it, not only will have to navigate the roads, they'll also have to navigate the, the demands of the various legal jurisdictions around the world. And not everyone is happy about the idea of these um, massive uh, tons of metal with no driver behind them. Yeah, and you know, the problem is of course, it doesn't uh, address the problem of there being too many cars on the road, right? Um, I think so many of our problems in terms of it doesn't address the um, congestion that we have. And also the big challenge is, is that, um, and Elon Musk said this, it's like getting to the 99% is really easy, right? That it's, you know, solving for most of the problems that you might uh, encounter on the road is easy. It's that last 1% that has just really frustrated automakers, right? And it, and it's that last 1% where I think you need to create trust with both uh, legislators and regular drivers on the road who, many of whom don't actually, are not actually fans of this technology. Okay, and, and a, a quick word about that last 1%. How does it work? How do these autonomous vehicles decide whether to prioritize the life of the driver about to plow into a group of school children who've just run into the road or allow the driver to be crushed by the out of a lorry, out of control lorry gathering speed behind him. Uh, great question, Phil. Uh, so with this one, it is very innovative in the sense that it is a chain of thought reasoning model, so that it can actually think, uh, break apart the problem into different steps, and then, and that is it, right? And so that's it, it. Thinks about it and it comes to a solution. All right. Thank you for that, Igor. Igor Bonifacic. Thank you so much.